What's poppin' T Squad? It's your girl Keisha, and I'm here with tonight. All T All Shade Love and Hip Hop Holly Reunion Part One. Okay, so I have to say the part one reunion was a little bit lackluster for me. Um, hopefully part two will be lit based on the little mini trailer at the end. Seems like it will pick up in part two. But you know we gotta do best dress, worst dress, best her, worst her, all that good teeth. So for me, my best dress woman award goes to Brooke Valentine. You know, this whole season, she has slayed with the fashion. Hair, makeup, outfits were always on point. Nails done. Everything was always together, snatched and pulled. If you're going to be on reality television, bring it with the fashion. There's no fucking excuse. I like that she served us old Hollywood glamour with her hair. The makeup was dewy and just supple and buttery. The outfit was really cute. Love the little burgundy, sparkly Christmas time number she was giving us. Loved it. Hazel E. Polished. Loved it. Loved her slick, sleek blonde hair. Everything was um, blended well. Edges on fleek. Makeup was nice. The jewelry was nice. The outfit was just enough. White perfection. Great. Hazley brought it. Last but not least, I like Princess uh, look. It was giving me that Sunny and Cher vibe. I hate the fact that on reunions, though, whether it be Love and Hip Hop or Real Housewives or whatever, I don't understand why they feel like sequins is always the look. Like, they gotta wear something glittery and sparkly in order to be fashionable. And I just feel like that's for girls that don't really know fashion and don't really have taste. But it was cute nonetheless. Best dressed man for me goes to Marcus. Loved his outfit. Safari looked nice as usual. And AD. I know AD isn't a man, but she dresses like one. So she's in my best dressed man category. Like his, her little black and white suit ensemble. Um, Worst dressed man. I forgot to write this down. I guess it would probably have to go to A1. He always looks a hot mess dot com. Ray J didn't really give me anything with those band-aids channeling Nelly. I know he had an accident, but I really wasn't here for it. Um, I can't think of anyone else off the top of my head, but I would say those. Um, Worst dressed woman, Moni Slaughter. What in the Star Trek hell was that goddamn outfit? What was the shoulder shit going on? What was that, ma'am? Who made that and why? And who in your team said, that's the look, ma'am. That's the look, sis. We going for that look. Did not like her lace front at all. I, I did not like her makeup. I didn't like oh, worse makeup, too. I'll get to that in a minute. So, Monique's worst dress outfit. Lyrica Anderson had on a dirty sheet wrapped around her. I don't know what in the fuck Lyrica had on. Lyrica always look a mess and she's a pretty girl and she looks a mess worse hair lyrica again it was orange it was plastic it was nappy it was a shake and go wig straight out the bag that they tried to curl the curls wouldn't even stand it wouldn't even put on her head right it just was plopped on her chanel west coast her wig was atrocious it looked like a helmet on her head I don't understand why she had on a wig that matched her real hair underneath. It just was stupid. It was big. I don't even know if they braided her real hair underneath to make it lay right. It just was a mess. I was not here for it. Worst makeup, Keisha Cole. She didn't even have her brows done. I did not like her makeup at all. Keisha was serving us some good fellas with the hairstyle, that bouffant. <laughs> so those were my fashion critiques. Oh, the fashion was just, just abysmal. So, Alexis announced that she was pregnant in a feather frock. She was backstage acting the fool. Like, she is so proud to be uh, pregnant by Fetty Wap, and I just don't understand why. When this nigga got, like, ten kids by ten different bitches, he was a one-hit wonder. The checks, bitch, have dried the fuck up, so you're gonna be crying when you ain't got no money for diapers and, uh, within the next year, girl. Like, she's so damn stupid. She's so pretty and so dumb. Where are her parents? Who raised her? Like, she had to have grown up in a fucked up ass environment, because that little girl is stupid. So, 
Lucci says that the baby might be his and congratulates her on their baby. <laughs> that shit was so funny. Masika says Alexis just wants to be famous. And I agree with her. Um, she says that she only attacks her because she's on television and Fetty uh, got other women pregnant while they were supposedly together. I 100% agree. Like, once again, why are you so mad at Masika? Why are you so mad? Be mad at the nigga that you were supposedly being that you were supposed to be in a relationship with that cheated on you with her and got her pregnant. Why are you so upset with her? But yet still, you went back to the same motherfucker that cheated on you and had a baby with this girl. And now you decided to have a baby with him. Who do you think you are? Tara and um, old girl from New York. Like, are you that damn retarded? Are you that damn desperate? Like, what is wrong with you? Evidently, you can't be that mad. You went back and sat on that dick again. You're stupid as hell, little girl, and you need Jesus. Um, I do feel like she only attacks Masika so because Masika has a platform and she is on television and she is somewhat relevant because you don't ever hear her say nothing about the other 50 million bitches that he was out here fucking. The little girl just retarded. So Alexis says that Masika harasses her and tries to get her uh, not to be placed on blogs and stuff. I'm like, ooh, because blogs is our life. Like, Instagram is life. Girl, sit down. Hazel and Moniece um, then somehow start to argue and security steps in, and they going back and forth, and Monice tries to fight her. Monice is escorted off stage. She's like, oh, I can't stand that bitch. And then we come back for commercial break. We, we find out that Hazel was escorted out of the building and is not coming back. And I was like, well, damn, well, all right. <laughs> so, <laughs> bye, Hazel. AD and Monice are back together. Nobody cares. AD admits that Tiffany and her... Um, did try to fool around when they were teenagers, but it just didn't work out. Uh, Tiffany says that she does not have feelings for AD Lies Girl, but okay. Tiffany doesn't like Monice apparently because she said that uh, Monice isn't affectionate enough towards AD. If AD ain't mad at it, then bitch, why are you? AD says, why would I vent to you when you have failed relationship? You got like five different niggas' uh, name tattooed on you. She didn't say niggas. I paraphrase that. But I was like, oh, the shade. They're like, you wasn't giving this shade during the season. So I feel like now she's trying to step up and have Monique's back because she realized how horrible she looked throughout the season. AD feels that Tiffany's acting weird and that... They then decide to leave things. Their relationship is at the end strained. Um, but then Tiffany throws shade at AD again. And I'm like, girl, just go on and get off stage. Go back to the pole. Keisha and Booby get on stage. Keisha, um, uh, and Booby are still, you know, just being friends and trying to raise their son together and be one big happy ass family. Booby says that he's happily single. And then Brooke interjects and says he's not. She says that he wants to be married. And Keisha turned her back like, child, please. Girl, you don't know this nigga. If he wanted to be married so bad, he wouldn't have cheated on me while he was with me. Have several, sis. Bridget is on stage and her little story is highlighted. She admits that she cheated on um James. Um, they decide, you know, their whole little situation is done and that they're, they're not going to try to get back together. Fizz says that Omarion is still trying to prove that he can, you know, be a solo act um, when he knows that he can't. Omarion still has not called him back. Obviously, Fizz is salty. I would feel some type of way, too, because at the end of the day, we all grew up together. We were in a group together. We were friends together. Like, don't do me like that. At least have them a decency just to say, this is not something that I want to do instead of just flat out ignoring me because you never know who you're going to need and you should not burn certain bridges because one day you might look up and Fizz might be the big star and you might go to him for a handout and help and then you can't, you know, get the assistance from him because of how you did him. I don't know what's going on with Morion, but I need for him to have several. He is really, like, leaving a bad taste in my mouth. Like, you ain't no better than nobody. Once again, where the single at? I ain't seeing you on no Billboard Music Awards, the Grammys, no shit like that. You had a single uh, about two years ago. And let's keep it all the one way, 100. That song that he had with Janae Aiko and Chris Brown was a bop because of Janae Aiko and Chris Brown. It really wasn't because of you, Omarion. It was because Janae said she liked to get her booty ate like groceries. So the song was a bop because of Janae. Um, 
Safari then gets up and does some dance moves, and I was like, what am I watching? Dance fever? What the fuck is going on? Zell and Mr. Ray confront each other. Zell wasn't aware that there was a problem between him and Mr. Ray until he went to Mr. Ray's page, realized he was blocked, that upset him, and he said he wanted to fight him after that. How old are you people? I don't understand it. Masika says that she went to sleep as Zell's friend and woke up his enemy. He agrees. He says that he felt like she was okay with Mr. Ray hating on him. Nina asked Zell why he always talks about Ray his weight and he says he loves fat people and his best friend is heavy fat is heavy set Mr. Ray says she sure is and they'll say but she got a neck though she can go like this <laughs> that shit that shit was funny that shit was funny as fuck to me geez. he's like she can go like this though she can go like this <laughs> Nina doesn't have her find the fat uh, jokes funny. I found it funny as fuck because I'm a big bitch my goddamn self. And let me just say one thing. When you're going back and forth with a motherfucker, I'm going to say whatever. I don't give a fuck. I'm going to talk about your weight, bitch. I'm going to talk about your mama. I'm going to talk about your kids, bitch. I'm going to talk about anything Whatever comes to my motherfucking mind, bitch. I don't give a fuck. Them fat jokes was funny as fuck to me. I don't give a goddamn. I don't feel like it was fat shape, but the nigga is fat, goddamn it. And at the end of the day, Zell looked like a Tyrannosaurus wreck. Mr. Ray just don't know how to fucking Jones. That's the only part of it. Like, cause there's so much shit that you can say about Zell. Cause Zell ugly than a motherfucker. He gives us black Joker tees. His hair is always a mess with them five plants looking like he just came straight off somebody's plantation. Like, girl, he just don't know how to read. But the fat jokes are funny as fuck. I feel like Nina needs to have several and sit the fuck down. Shut up, Nina. Um. Zell says that Ray is a nice looking guy, not his type, and that he really ain't got no beef with him, and everybody like, hug, 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 he gets up, goes across stage, acting like he bopped the hug, Mr. Ray, and then I guess he bopped him and hit him, and then went off, and next week we gonna see that man bleeding. Do I feel like he was wrong for acting like he about to hug that man, like it was all good, then hit him? 100% that was fucked up, that was a sneak uh, hit, I, I did not like that. You can tell that Ray is not a fighter. He really don't want that smoke when it comes to Zell. And at, at that point, I do feel like he is just fucking with Mr. Ray because he knows he can. Um, I did not like that part at all. Um, but at the end of the day, Mr. Ray, if you know you're not about that life, then stop talking so much goddamn shit and don't bring your ass on reality television show where you know you're going to have to fight somebody. Um, so, yeah, but other than that, I give reunion part one, um, a C minus. It was cool for what it was. Next week, they need to pick it up a pace or two. But, yeah, let me know who you thought was the best dress, worst dress, best her, worst her, best makeup, worst makeup. Uh, let me know what you thought about the reunion part one down below in the comment section. Remember to check out the Love and Hip Hop season finale review, as well as my new episode of Spill the Tea. I will be going live on Sundays for Spill the Tea. Um, so make sure to have your notification bell button turned on. If you like this video, please thumbs up and share with your family and friends. And subscribe to my channel and become a member of the Tea Squad. It's popping over here in these streets, cuz. And if you have a question for Since You Asked, me and my best friend Monique's advice show, Please email us at sensuax1 at gmail.com. All of my social media information and contact info is down below in the description box. I love you guys so much. Thanks for watching this video. Bye.